Hello, boys and girls. Here we are starting a brand new chapter. Chapter five. Woohoo! So we're on chapter five, lesson one. And the name of this lesson is model factors. So that word model in math, that usually means that you are showing numbers or problems or equations with objects or pictures. Okay. And then the word factors, that's a really important word for this chapter. Factors are what you use to build numbers. Okay. Sometimes I draw this for my students. Dun -de -dun. Let's see. Nah, nah, nah. And I call that a factory. Okay. What do you see right there? Factor factor right the factory is where you build things it's where you make things and what do you make in a factory some people call them products so here's a little truck the truck full of products okay so in this factory, we might have four and three. And what product would they make? A 12. What about two and seven? What product would they make? They'd make a 14, throw that in the product truck. So a factory is where you build things. And a factor is a number you use with another number to build things. Factor times factor equals product. Factory, factor times factor, where you build in the factory, equals a product. You make a product with two factors. Okay, that's just another little memory device, a mnemonic device. See, that's like the smokestack at the factory. All right, you feeling it? Yes, factor, factory, they build things, they build products. All right, so the directions on this say, use tiles to find all the factors of a product. Record the arrays on grid paper and write the factors shown. Well, did your teacher give you a huge bag of tiles? Maybe, maybe not. Did she give you, or he, give you grid paper? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. We're gonna do the best we can on this, okay? So I've pulled out number three and number four. So for number three, we have to find all the factors of 45, okay? And sometimes a little T-chart like that is helpful to keep your factors organized, all right? So one is a factor of every whole number. So you can always start with one. And how many would be in a row of one if you had 45? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to squeeze some in. 30, 31, this is not a good array. 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. 45. Okay. I hope that your writing is better than mine. So we just made one row of 45. One times 45 is 45. So there are two of the factors of 45, right? One and 45. So let's think about the number two. If I make two rows and I have 45 tiles, Will those rows have the same number in them? Will they have an equal number? What do you know about two? Two times anything. 
you always end up with an even number because you have two, right? Like two times eight, 16 is even. Two times four, eight, eight is even. Two times nine, two times nine, that's even an odd number you're multiplying. Two times nine is 18, 18 is an even number. Okay, so let's look at 45. Is 45 an even number? Nope. Remember odds and evens? You look at the ones place. If it's an even number, then the number is even. If it's an odd number, the number is odd. So 45, you get a thumbs down to being a, uh, wait, 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 45. Two, two gets a thumb down, thumbs down to being a factor of 45 because 45 is an odd number. We cannot make two rows of 45 and have the rows be equal. So let's move on to three. Let me think now about three. You know what we could, we could do? Well, let's just try an array. All right, you ready? One, two, three. There's my three rows, and I'm going to keep adding on three and counting until I get to 45. Now I have to be pretty tidy with this one. I can't, I can't do this kind of madness because I have to be sure the rows are equal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Don't better. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Well, look at that. 3 is a factor of 45. But every factor has to have a buddy factor because a factor right? A factor has to have a buddy to make a product. So how many are in each row? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So three rows of 15. Three is a factor of 45 and 15 is a factor of 45. Okay. So moving on, after three comes four. Now, here's where you have to be a little math detective. What do you know about four times 10? Four times 10 is 40, right? So what do you know about four times 11? Four times 11 is 44. Now remember, we're looking for factors of 45. So if I have 11 rows of four, because we're thinking about just is four a factor of 45. If I have 11 rows of four, that's 44 tiles, not 45 tiles. And if I get four more, that's 48 tiles. Mm -mm. So by starting with a friendly number, 10, because what remember I was trying to figure out is four a factor of 45? I thought four times 10 is 40. Four times 11 is 44. Four times 12, well, that's four more, that's 48. I went right past 45, didn't I? So four, you get a thumbs down as a factor of 45. And boys and girls, if you want to prove that, try to do four rows on your grid paper and count to 45 and see if all the rows are equal. Okay, so now we go to five. So see how I'm doing this in an organized way. One, check. Two, no, because it's an odd number. Three, yep, we did this beautiful array. Four, we just gave that a thumbs down. So now we go on to five. All right, what do you know about five? Well, we know we love five, right? When you think about Multiples of five, you go five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, right? What do you see every time in the ones place? 
you see either a zero or a five. Ooh, and what do I see here in 45? I see a five. So I know that five is definitely a factor of 45. Now we'll do our array. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to keep filling in the rows till I get to 45, being nice and neat this time. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Woo! There are my tiles, or my little teeny dots. Okay? So I made five rows, and I ended right on 45. So I know that 5 is a factor of 45, but what's the factor that goes with 5? Every factor, you can't just have a factor by itself. It's 5 times something, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 is also a factor of 45, okay? So, let's go on to 6. So, 6. Is there anything I can think about 6 that's going to help me? 6 times 10 is 60. That's way high. 6 times 5. See how I'm trying to think of whether or not 6 is something that I can count by. Can I count by sixes to get to 45? Um, I'm going to start with six sets of five. That's 30. Then there's 36, right? Then there's 42. Well, I'm close to 45. What's six more than that? 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 48. I went right past 45, didn't I? So my groups of six, if I made six rows and I filled them in, counting to 45, and you can try this on your grid paper or with your tiles if you have them, you are not going to be able to make equal rows with 45 tiles if you have rows of six. So why was I trying six? Because I'm just, I'm just going in order here, okay? Because it 6 times 5 is 30, 6 times 6 is 36, and you can even say 6 rows of 7 is 42, 6 rows of 8 is 48. So 6, you get a thumbs down. All right? Now let's think about 7, because we're just being organized, right? So 7, can I, if I did 7 rows, could I equally put 45 tiles in seven rows? All the rows have to be equal. Well, let's, let's try what we just did again. Seven times five is 35. Well, that's pretty close. Okay, seven times six, so another set of seven, that's 42. I'm getting closer to 45. 7 times 7, that's 49. So 7 is not going to work. We just skipped right over 45. So if I had 7 rows of 5, 7 rows of 6, 7 rows of 7, none of those will allow me to use 45 tiles and make equal rows. So 7, thumbs down to you. Okay? How about 8? Well, let's do the same thing with 8. Okay, what's 8 times? Well, we can start with 8 times 5 again. 8 times 5 is 40. Okay, so if I had 8 rows of 5, I'd have 40. If I had 8 rows of 6, I would have 48. Nope, I can't do it. 45 is right in between there, isn't it? So boys and girls, we just thought about making eight rows, okay? So if you had eight rows, here's what my thinking was. If I had eight rows of five, I would use 40 tiles. If I had eight rows of six, I would use 48 tiles. 
So again, on your grid paper, you can try it. Start with eight rows and try to fill them in and see if you can get to 45. And look, eh, you, can get, you can use 40 or 48 tiles, but not 45. Okay, so now we did eight. So now we're thinking about nine. Now, wait a second. Nine, that rings a bell, doesn't it? Right there. Is 9 a factor of 45? Yeah, we already figured that one out. All right, so now on to 10. Is 10 a factor of 45? 10, now what do you know about multiples of 10? 10, 20, 30, 40. If I made 10 rows of tiles, and I tried to fill the rows with my 45 tiles, I couldn't do it, right? I could do it with 40 or 30, but not with 45. So 10, you get a thumbs down, okay? 11, you know 11 times four is 44, so that's too close to 45. 12, that's a two in there, right? You're gonna get an even number. So 12, you will produce an even number. You get a thumbs down. 13, I'm just gonna tell you. Eh. 14, eh. <laughs> So guys, this system of using tiles and modeling on grid paper, it's awesome because you get a total visual of your factors. But with a big number like 45, it can take a long time. So Mrs. Olvey is going to be helpful and tell you, you're finished. You found all the factors of 45, okay? Now, just FYI, every time factors are listed in a math book, they are in um, numerical order or least to greatest. So I'm gonna list all the factors least to greatest. Okay, guys, so one, that's right, three, five, uh, nine is the next one, 15, and 45. So I just listed the factors of 45. One, three, five, nine, fifteen, and forty-five. Okay, so a factor meaning three is a factor because three times something is forty-five. Three times fifteen, as we know, which is why fifteen is also a factor. Fifteen times three is forty-five. Okay. All right. So let's look at number four. I have left myself virtually no space to do number four, right? <laughs> okay, so number four is the number 19. 19 is a very special number, okay? So you know that, here I'll put 19 there. You know, of course, that one row of 19, one and 19 are both factors of 19 because 1 times 19 is 19 we can build at the factory 1 and 19 making 19 okay 2 nope because it's an odd number 3 well 3 times 6 is 18 3 times 7 is what is it guys 21 nope we passed right over 19 okay how about four? Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, eh, four, sorry. How about five? Well, does 19 have a zero or a five in the ones place? Nope. How about six? Six, 12, 18, 24, went right over 19. Okay, uh, seven, 
7 times 2 is 14. 7 times 3 is 21. Nope. How about 8? 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times 3. Mm -mm. Sorry. Now, 9. No, we're getting crazy now. So, the only two factors of 19 are 1 and 19. So you can model this by doing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Oopsie. <laughs> One row of 19. And if you want to try on your grid paper, all those other numbers I said, because I know I was kind of doing zippity doo -dah, you can try that. But that makes 19 a really special number. That's called a prime number. You guys are going to learn about those later. Okay? Looking at this slide, my goodness, we did a lot on this page. So we learned the factors of 45 and the factors of 19. All right, let's go on. All right, we are down here at problem solving. And unbelievably, they have given you the number 70. Ugh. Brooke has to set up 70 chairs in equal rows for the class talent show. Brooke, that's a lot of chairs for one child. But there is not room for more than 20 rows. What are the possible number of rows that Brooke could set up? Okay, so let's think about this, boys and girls. She has 70 chairs, but that she can't make more than 20 rows. So it's not like she can make 70 rows. She can't make 35 rows. That's too many rows. She can only go as far as 20 rows. Okay, so let's start with one row. Can she make one row of 70 chairs? Yeah. Be really weird, wouldn't it? It'd be a super long front row of 70 chairs across, but she could do that. Okay? So she could make one row. Okay? Could she make two rows? Well, I have to think about 70. Could she make two rows? 70 does end in zero, and zero is, it's not an even number, but a number that ends in zero is even. It can be divided by two. Let me do this. Two divided by 70. Let's see, two into seven, three, multiply three times two, six, subtract, check, bring down, Divide again, 2 into 10, 5 times. Oh, look at that. I could make two rows of 35 chairs with my 70 chairs. So 2 is another choice. What about 3? Could I make 3 rows of chairs? Let's see, 3 into 7, 2 times 6. 7 minus 6 is 1. 3 into 10 goes 3 times. Oh, no. I would have one remaining chair. I'd have 23 rows and one floating around chair. 3 is not going to work. Okay. What about 4 rows? 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? 4 into 30. Part times 5. Okay, are we thinking part times 8? No, four times 7. There we go. It's 28. No, nope. we have two chairs floating around. So, boys and girls, do you see how I'm using division to find factors? Or actually, I'm using it to find not factors. I know that 
if I had four rows of 17 chairs, I wouldn't be using all of the 70 chairs because I'd have two chairs left over. If I had three rows of 23 chairs, mm -mm, I'd have one chair left over. So I'm proving that three and four are not factors of 70. Okay, so we're thinking about five now. Is five a factor of 70? Well, 70 ends in zero. So you already know, boom, yes. Okay, now let's think about six. If I had six rows, so let's start dividing. Seven divided by six. Multiply one times six is six. Subtract, bring down. Okay, and six into 10 or 10 divided by six. That is another one. 10 minus six is four. So if I had six rows, I wouldn't have an even number of rows. So six, again, you get a thumbs down. Okay, I'd have four extra chairs floating around. All right, so moving on, let's try seven. Oh no, hold on a minute. Seven? Yay! I love seven because I know my tens. Seven, right? Seven times ten. Hey, that means I can have ten rows too. So can I, I can have seven rows of ten, or I can have ten rows of seven. Hmm. All right. Now, there is one more left. Okay? And let me see if you can figure out which one it is. We know that that's 1 times 70, 2 times 35, but we can't use 35 as a factor. It is a factor of 70, but why can't we use it? Because we're only allowed to have 20 rows, right? So we can't list 70, even though 70 is a factor, it's way more than 20, right? So five, what's fives factor buddy here? We know that seven and 10 are factor buddies. Seven rows of 10, seven is less than 20. 10 rows of seven, 10 is less than 20. But then we have precious little five here, right? Who's, what's five's factor, buddy? How many rows of five would make 70 rows? It's the last factor. It's the last factor that we can list, okay? So you wanna do a little division? You can do division, you can try check revise, you know, just try a number. So you know 10 times five is 50, okay? And remember that we're trying to get to 70. So it's gonna be a number greater than 10. 11 times five is 55. You wanna just do a try check and revise or do you wanna divide? I'm gonna divide. You can do a try check and revise. Okay, five into seven, one time, one times five is five. Subtract, seven minus five is two. Is two less than five? Check, bring down. Okay, five into 20, oh, yes, 14. 14 is the final factor of 70, so Brooke can make her rows. So Brooke can make one row, two rows, five rows, seven rows, 10 rows, or 14 rows. Okay? And why didn't we use these factors of 70? Because the problem says she can only make 20 rows. All right. That was a whopper, huh, guys? You are doing excellent. All right, so now we're on the lesson check. 
which of the following lists all the factors of 24? So all the numbers in the factory that make 24. All right, so I'm looking at the choices here. Uh, which one is like screaming out at you? I'm wrong. C, of course. C doesn't have one, which is, of course, a factor of every number, and it doesn't have 24, because isn't 1 times 24, couldn't you put them in the factory and get 24 as a product, right? That's the truck bringing them away. All right, so it's definitely not C. Um, look at these others. Well, oh, boys and girls, this is kind of like a math detective situation. If four is in the ones place, then what do you know about 24? What kind of number is it? Is it odd or is it even? Mm -hmm, it's an even number. Okay? Every even number has what for a factor? We just talked about that a little bit. Every even number, meaning they have an even number in the ones place, has our good friend two as a factor. So do you see two here? I don't. Do you see it there? I don't. Do you see it here? I do. Okay. So the answer is D. And what's two's factor, buddy? 12. Two times 12, 24, right? Four times six, three times eight, one times 24. Looks like a little rainbow upside down. Okay, so the only choice is D. Now, guys, do you see how we did that? Because you have such great math sense. You know 24 is even, and you're like, oh, wait a minute. I know even numbers all have a factor of 2. Where's my 2 in these other choices? All right, let's move on. Okay, guys, here we are on the back in your spiral review, number three, okay? Lesson 2.4, which is chapter two, lesson four, okay? The pumpkin patch is open every day. If it sells 2,750 pounds of pumpkins each day, about how many pounds does it sell in seven days? Well, did you hear this word screaming out at you about? Okay, and then remember I said I always like to glance down at the choices. Look at all those zeros in the choices, boys and girls, right? You know we're going to be estimating. So each day they sell 2,750 pounds of pumpkins. <laughs> That is an outrageous amount of pumpkins. I just want to say that. Um, so about how many pounds does it sell in seven days? So in one day, it sells 2,750. So when, and we need to know in over seven days. So this happens seven times, doesn't it? Each day. But how do we round. I mean, <laughs> how do we estimate? I just gave you the answer. How do we estimate when we multiply by rounding? Darn it. I gave it away. So we're rounding to the highest place value. Box it out. Look at 27. Is 27 closer to 20 or 30? Well, it's definitely closer to 30. So I'm going to do 3,000 times 7. I'm going to do my basic fact. 3 times 7 is 21. Kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. Boom, buddy, 
bombity. My gosh. So these people in seven days sell 21,000 pounds of pumpkins. That must be the biggest pumpkin patch in the world. All right, guys, have a great night. I'll see you soon.